Security, policies, compliance are all top of mind themes for our customers when they're moving to the cloud. Now, delivering applications can be uh, particularly challenging for some customers potentially in regulated areas and otherwise. Uh, today, we're going to talk about this brand new and exciting service called Private Link on Azure. I'm Mikhail Rees, I'm Product Marketing Manager for Azure Networking. With me today is Sumit Mitchell from our engineering team. So, Sumit, welcome to the, uh, to the show. Uh, tell me a little bit about Private Link. Sure, Mikhail. So, Private Link is kind of a brand new technology that is built on top of the very robust and reliable SDN platform. Right. So, what it allows you to do is basically consume any sort of service, whether it be like Azure Pass service, or it can be Microsoft Partner Services, right. or it can be customer's own service, I see. privately into the customer's VNet. Right. So what we will do is we will map the service as a private IP in the customer's VNet, and the customer can consume it right there locally. Right. So the customer does not have to open up any security gates to public internet, and uh, the, the data is completely secure, flowing all over the Microsoft backbone. So I'm familiar with uh, endpoints and service endpoints and past services, or even third-party services here. So you're saying there are no limitations here. And if I'm familiar with endpoints, how am I thinking about private link in that context? So in that context, I mean, uh, you rightly said, right? So we had this uh, offering for service endpoints, which was like you know mapping the service and locking it down to a particular VNet. Right. But there was an implicit uh, issue with that. Like it, it kind of locks down to an entire service, uh -huh. so which implies like any malicious insider who is sitting inside the company, uh -huh. he can basically exfiltrate the data to another account. I see. Because you do not get like protection from that kind of scenarios. I see. So private link goes like one step broad, and it kind of like, you know, restricts the access to a particular resource instead of the entire service. Right. So in that case, I mean, there is no scope for data exfiltration. Right. So essentially you could say that any service, literally any service can be delivered directly inside the customer, the consumer's VNet by any entity, this being the customer's own other entities or divisions or service groups, but also from partners. That's the beauty of it. Even uh, going one step further, I mean, the customer's own service. Later in this video, I mean, we're going to demo like how I can create my own service using private link technology right. and how it can be mapped to another VNet yes. using the same technology. Are there specific groups of customers who tend to favor things like that, or, or this, or really need this? So, uh, is is this for regulated industries, or is it for any customer? So, we are basically hearing this demand from like wide spectrum of customers, be it See. financial customers, be mm -hmm. it healthcare customers, be it like Fortune 100 customers. Mm -hmm. So, everybody today is like so bent on privacy and compliance that this becomes the key aspect for people to onboard to public cloud. See. So, it's a big unblocker in that sense. So Sumit, um, now we talked about um, own services or services that are native to Azure like uh, past services and things like that. Uh, now if we were to also extend that into the partner sort of the ecosystem territory and partners delivering services to clients directly in here, uh, tell me a little bit about how that works. That's great, Mikkel. I mean, it's quite a powerful scenario. I mean, think of it, any service provider who want to deliver the service over Azure. Yeah. So Azure has like magnitude of customers. So right. any service provider can come, like set up its own service yeah. and deliver it privately to other customers on Azure. Right. So think of any SaaS provider. Right. So they can basically sell their services on Azure privately in customers' VNet. It's quite powerful. So this is a new addition to the, you could call it the service delivery mechanism if you're a service yes. provider and if, or if you're an application vendor that wants to provide these services to yeah. customers that have all their infrastructure on so Azure. So we are going to provide the same set of experience and capabilities that we are building for our own like so, Azure Pass services uh -huh. and the same consum consumption experience for the customers to consume the Microsoft partner services as well. Okay. What if I'm a customer then? So, so that sounds awesome. What if I'm a customer that are, and I know many customers are hybrid these days, right? So they're still, a lot of the data is state and applications that are are not able to move initially, and even you know uh, the users that are consuming these apps may be mobile or moving around. So you're coming to Azure through hybrid type of, of connections, things like that. Um, what do I do if I want to if I want to if I want to use Private Link? Is that is that a problem for me? No. So once you have presence on Azure, you have set up your VNet and a private endpoint to consume the service. Oh. So you, from the on prem on prem or like from other peered networks or from like any field, right? You can yep. come to the private endpoint and consume the service right. through like private peering or like VPN gateways. So all that private connectivity is established like using Private Link. I see. Okay. 
So assuming I'm a service provider coming in here, I want to deliver these services. Um, now, Private Link is a global service across all of Azure. Um, what if I'm not uh, currently on Azure in, in every region? Is that is that a limitation for me if I want to deliver my services to a customer that sits in a different region? Not at all. So Private Link is truly global and provides you a truly global experience. So let's say you are just in one or two regions on Azure, right? And Azure today supports like 54 plus regions. Yes. So you can reach any customer in any region and still you can uh, connect through private link. I see. Normally when we talk about security and compliance and things like that, I tend to think that this potentially adds more complexity. It becomes a really, um, becomes a complex discussion often. Uh, how easy is this to implement? How easy is this to, to put into your environments and your infrastructure? Glad that you asked, I mean, this was the very key requirement that we had when we started developing this feature. I mean, I it has to be very simplistic in terms of how you set it up and how you consume it. So we have like taken out like most of the restrictions, like you have to be in the same AD tenant, you have to be like in particular um, kind of a, a particular situation to consume the service, no. So here the, the private link works on an approval call flow. Mm -hmm. So basically just like any other service in the market, right, so there are consumers who can request a connection and the service provider can approve it, a connection. Once that approval goes through, then the data flows freely on the Microsoft backbone. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, could you take us through the flow and p p potentially demonstrate how it works? Definitely. I'm going to demo it right now. Thank you. So we are going to create a service in uh, one of the consumers VNet and then have it delivered privately into another VNet. So this is how the demo will look like. I will have a provider VNet and I will have a consumer VNet. In the provider VNet, we, we are going to have like uh, two different VMs which are running IaaS servers. They are behind a uh, standard load balancer. I'm going to spin up a private link service on top of the load balancer. And then on the consumer side, I'm going to create a private endpoint and consume the service through this private endpoint. In terms of workflow, it's really easy. So you basically create a private link service and then share the resource or alias with the consumer side. So the consumer can request a connection to that private link service using this alias. Once he does that, then the request will come to the service provider. He can either approve the connection or reject the connection. Once approved, the link is established and the data flows freely over the Microsoft backbone. Okay, let's get into action now. So as you can see on my screen, I have created uh, two different resource groups. One is called Demo Private Endpoint and another is called Demo Private Link Service. In the Demo Private Link Service, I have created uh, two backend VMs behind a standard load balancer, backend VM0, backend VM1 and the internal load balancer is ILB. So now what I'm gonna do is, uh, first of all, let me uh, go to the backend VM and show you that I am running a IS server on this VM. So if, let's say we go to localhost, you can see like the IS server is running. Next I'm gonna do is uh, go to this command prompt. Here I'm gonna run a script which will set up a private link service on the standard load balancer. So let me show you the contents of this script first. So all it does is it refers to a JSON template and then it deploys the Azure resource. So if, if you see the JSON templates, so here we are gonna create a top level resource which is called private link service. And all it takes as a parameter is a NAT IP and a load balancer front end IP configuration. Okay, so let's run it. Now this is creating a private link service on top of the standard load balancer. So in the portal, if we go to the uh, private link service side, you will see here that a virtual NIC will show up. See this NIC? It's called private link service .NIC. So this is a, this has a private IP, which is a NAT IP for the service. And 
and it says like uh, the private link service is created so not, now let's go to the consumer side and create a private endpoint before that i just want to take you through the consumer uh, resource group so here you can see we have a consumer vm0 and uh, nothing besides that just a subnet and a vnet So if I show you another template, which is called a private link PE connecting PLS. So here you can see like we are, we are gonna create a private endpoint. It's again a top level resource on Azure. So there we are gonna give the service ID for the private link service to whom this private endpoint will connect to. So this will come uh, from the private link service that we just created. And once this all this information is in place, you simply deploy a private endpoint. As you can see, like it says, created private endpoint successfully. And we can even see it in the portal as a virtual NIC on this side. So if I refresh it, you can see like this PE connecting PLS NIC starts appearing here. So this is a representation of private endpoint. So next, what we are gonna do is, uh, we are gonna see the connection status. So we are gonna query the private link service and see like the request is sent to the private link service. So as you can see on my screen, uh, the status is showing as pending and it is awaiting approval from the service provider. Next, what I'm gonna do is approve this connection. And as you can see, now the connection is approved. So basically the service provider has given its intent to connect to the private endpoint. At this point, the traffic should be flowing. So now let's see, like if we go to this a virtual NIC on the private endpoint side, you can see the IP is 10.0.3.5. We are gonna log into the consumer VM and from here we will try to access the service through the private endpoint. And as you can see it worked. So basically, the traffic is being taken from the consumer side to the private uh, to the uh, provider side through this private endpoint, and that's the demo. Thank you. Wow, I'm super excited! What an awesome demo! Thank you. I mean, I didn't realize it was so easy for a customer to deliver services privately, or partners deliver services privately that's right. to customers or consumers anywhere. Uh, within the Asosphere, even from on-premises as well. I mean, I know I'm gonna go in and play around with this in the Azure portal, and I encourage you to do the same, um, and go visit us on azure.com as well for more information and documentation around uh, PrivateLink. Thank you, thank you, Mikkel.